are a couple clips from the original episode titled U.S. Federal Census Records, 1850 to 1940, Part 2. And there are several uh, other records uh, that are available as well. And those are non-population schedules, the Indian schedules, um, the agricultural schedules. There's some slave schedules. But for today, we're going to focus mostly on uh, the population schedules. If you're new to genealogy and you've never used the U.S. federal uh, census before, um, you're going to find this to be probably one of the most valuable resources that you have in your uh, toolkit. So the U.S. Marshals, and later on they called them census, uh, they used uh, just enumerators, census enumerators, would walk door to door and they would document each family group. Now in the early census records, they only documented the name of the head of the household and then later uh, they added all names. So we'll go into each one of those here shortly. Information was provided by various people. It wasn't always the person at home. Sometimes it was a neighbor. So keep that in mind. So if we take a look at, I'm going to transition this over so you can see it a little bit better. If we take a look at this, in this case, it's a 1920 U.S. population schedule. You can see that we have James Jones, his wife Minnie, and Gertrude and Kenneth, their daughter and their son. It gives us... Um, there a column and this is the 1920 census but we're going to dig into all of the different variations here shortly but uh, here we have the sex of the person male or female uh, color in this case white um, and the age at last birth in this case uh, excuse me age at last birthday in this case uh, he is uh, excuse me he is 33 she is 25 they have Gertrude their daughter is five and the Two over 12 means that this person, Kenneth, the son, is two months old. Of course, the children are going to be single at that age. Uh, this particular census shows the place of birth of the person in that line, but it also shows the place of birth of the father. In this case, I found this one interesting. James Jones, his father was born on the Atlantic Ocean. That's the way I read that. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's what it looks like to me. Um, and then the mother and her parents are both born in Ohio. Um, and the children, of course, are all born in Ohio, except for the son is born in West Virginia. So that's kind of a quick, quick and dirty look at that census record. Hey, we're going to get back to that video here in just a moment. But I want to let you know that Genealogy TV has a website, a newsletter, and a Facebook page. Links for all of that are in the show notes below. All right, let's get back to it. So if we move on to my next slide here, there is a reason for this. Um, one of the things that I want you to pay attention to is the month of enumeration. This is really important because if you're trying to estimate a person's age or when they were born, what year they were born, the month of enumeration is important. So if you'll notice here, the early enumeration uh, schedules were, okay, let me back up just a minute. We have census schedules from 1790 to present day, but only available to us because of the Privacy Act to 1940. So the numeration month on the early schedules were in August, in 1830, 40, 50, 60, 70, and 80, and 90 were in June, actually in 1900 as well, were in June, in 1910, it was in April. In 1920, it was January 1st. 1930, it's April 1st. And on to present day has been in April. So the reason for that is if a person is listed as, say, seven years old, but he hasn't had his birthday yet, it'll make a difference when you're estimating the uh, birth year. Because when the enumerator walked around, Whatever the birth year was at that time, whatever the, excuse me, the age of the person was at that time is the, is going to determine what year he was born. So I hope that makes sense. Um, so it, it, it's important to note on each record that you're working on what the 
enumeration month and day was at the top of the schedule.